I promise you, John the Baptist didn't think, I bet if I put on this camel hair coat and put dreadlocks in my hair and eat grasshoppers, people might come hear what I have to say. No. Rather, he was so focused on living in the call God had given him that he just didn't concern himself with the other stuff. Welcome to Life Words Day by Day. In John chapter 1 verse 6 it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. What's the first thing that we learn about this character, John the Baptist? Well, the first description we discover is that he was a man. Now, the apostle, the writer of the gospel, John, is not trying to tell us that the only effective witnesses are men. But what he is communicating is that John the Baptist was simply a man. If you grew up in church, then you probably know a little bit more about John the Baptist. His birth was a miraculous birth. His parents were old and beyond childbearing years when an angel told them that they would conceive and bear a son and that he would be great before the Lord. He would be a Nazarite prophet. His entire life would be dedicated to the service of the Lord. We learn that from the gospel writer Luke. From the gospel writer Mark, we learn that John the Baptist, when he was grown, stayed in the wilderness. He wore a camel's hair tunic and ate locusts and wild honey. He baptized people, preparing them for the coming of the Messiah. He was bold and brash. He didn't use flattery. He was to the point. One time he called a group of religious people a brood of vipers. He was so bold that he stood up to a ruler and called him out for having an adulterous relationship, and it cost him his life. And so when we read about John the Baptist, we oftentimes think, wow, what a personality. He was so dedicated. He was so bold. He was so relentless. I could never be like him. But John the Apostle simply says, there was a man. The Gospel writer here gives us a simple introduction to this man known as John the Baptist. And do you want to know the greatest feature of John the Baptist's life? It wasn't his seemingly wild, on-the-edge, rough-and-cut attitude. There's two things that come to the surface about John the Baptist. The first one was his awareness that he was just a man. I find it interesting that the gospel writer here simply labels him John and not John the Baptist like Matthew does. No titles, no accolades. He was just a human being. In fact, the apostle writer says he was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. John the Baptist was a popular fellow. He had his own disciples and followers and people who were loyal to him, not because John demanded this, but just simply by way of his abandonment and obedience to God. And John himself was very aware of his humanity. Some of the first words on John the Baptist's mouth in this gospel are, I am not the Christ. John the Baptist describes himself as simply a voice crying out in the wilderness saying, Make straight the way of the Lord. Later on, John the Baptist is going to say about Jesus, He must increase and I must decrease. So John was aware that he was just a man, but I also want you to pay special attention to his obedience to God. The text says there was a man sent from God. God had a plan for this man named John. God had a mission for this man named John. God is a missionary God, sending his eternal and only son to the earth and also sending a man to prepare the way. God always sends a person to prepare the way for people to hear and receive his son. The image that often comes to mind of John the Baptist is not meant to show us that he was of a certain personality which allowed him to do what God called him to do. His drastic appearance and lifestyle was due to his obedience. So don't get it twisted up. The image John the Baptist uh, was in stark contrast to the religious leaders of the day. John the Baptist is an example of what it means to be in the world but not of the world. He wasn't that way because he wanted to buck the modern day fashion trends. He was simply obedient. And we get it twisted up oftentimes, don't we? We think we have to have things to make us stand out. And the church can fall into the trap thinking that we have to do radical, attractional stuff so that people will notice us. When in reality, what is really attractional, what is really countercultural, is simple, trust filled obedience. So, are there any John the Baptist left? Does God still call people to this ministry of being a witness? Yes, all that are called to salvation are called to witness and testify. 
Paul says that we have been entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. The question becomes, will we be obedient to God's call? The John the Baptist of our day are to be the church. Not the church as an institution, but the church as being the people who make up the church. And that's where we want to walk with Jesus day by day. Today, please pray for Dennis Lopez and his family, our missionaries in Honduras. And also remember the Portuguese-Brazilian Word broadcast in Brazil. Thank you.